Dawn arrives, and cats and burglars creep home to recount their victories or lick their wounds. Here at Oxford, the first grey light peeps over magnificent towers, silhouetting steeples, finding the people of this city of intellect still dancing, still reveling. All night long, these students have celebrated, officially the end of term. But who really knows the reason for this display of happiness that allows no sleep? But now the calypsos are sung. Now the night has finally departed. Wistfully, lone couples recall the hectic night and its spirit that still envelops them. Suddenly, quite suddenly, there is nobody. The roundabout is still. Bottles lie empty, glasses useless. Who wanted to sit during the night? Who is there to sit now? The streets are still asleep. And the learned minds of Oxford? No thoughts of bed. They're lazily dreaming on the River Charwell. The river wakes to the sound of happy voices and the gentle ripple of its waters as the punts glide softly between willow-laden banks. Even in these harmless waters, the rivalry between Oxford and Cambridge is reflected. But traditionally, the Oxford man punts from the duckboard end of his craft, the Cambridge man from the flat planked end. Tumbling waterfall, the weeping willow. What a sight to cherish when these same carefree souls are tethered in a city's dingy office. Let's go on the river, she said. Fine, said you, not daring to admit you'd never been punting before. Well, boy, you tried. stretched from bank to bank. To say the least, it can present problems. All night long, these students have celebrated. And because they're young, hunger has a frequent habit of demanding satisfaction. What better satisfaction than a cool riverside champagne breakfast with the girl of last night looking no less lovely in the sun's early light? What better enjoyment than this first meal of the term's last day? Mm -hmm. 